Welcome to the Unboxable Unstoppable podcast with me, Elena Turley. I really do, although that would not be practical, let's face it. Uh, This is a podcast. It's supposed to be a one-way conversation. So it's a little ridiculous, but still, I would love to know. Please let me know. How are you traveling? How are you liking this podcast? Would you like to share it with anybody? Please do. Would you like to tell me anything? Oh, I really like this bit. Oh, I really did not like this bit. Any of that, I would love to hear it. So please get in touch in any of the usual ways or through the website soulmamahub.com. So, my darlings, I have got a really interesting thing to talk about today. Do you know the classic story of the hare and the tortoise? So, in the southern hemisphere, we don't have a lot of tortoises, I don't think. They're more likely to be turtles. So, I'm going to say turtles because I like turtles and they sort of appeal to me a bit more. But the classic is the tortoise. So, basically, the story is about a hare, as in a big rabbit, who ridicules a slow-moving turtle. And because the turtle's sick and tired of the arrogance of the rabbit, the turtle challenges the rabbit to a race. And soon enough, the hare or the rabbit leaves the turtle behind and, confident of winning, takes a nap midway through the race. And when they wake up, they realise that the competitor, crawling steadily and slowly, has arrived at the finish line first. So that's the sort of original Aesop version, or Aesop, spelled A-E-S-O-P, the classic Wikipedia Aesop version. Um, It's a little bit ambiguous. So apparently in in a sort of classical context, again, according to Wikipedia, the conduct of taking on a bully was emphasized and the overconfidence of the hare rabbit is kind of the idea that, you know, too many people have got actual natural ability, which is then ruined by their own laziness and idleness, whilst sobriety, zeal and perseverance can prevail. So that's sort of what the turtle represents. And then it became sort of a European version where it was about the importance of slowing down and the importance of perseverance and taking your time with things which is kind of about the more you rush, the worse you do. So it's not actually about how fast you do something. It's about how well you do it. And this is the part of it that I think really interests me because what that talks to me about is it it talks to me about the way that we, certainly me, I'll speak for myself here, I really love the beginning of things and I really love the end of things. I love the bit where you get to start something, you know, the shiny new object. I love new things, new ideas, new technology. I think there's mercury in my horoscope or something. I don't know. Maybe we all like new things. I mean, I like old things too, but anyway, I really like starting things. There's something about the beginning. I was born on the first of the month as well, so maybe that's something to do with it. I don't know. Ask a numerologist. But certainly in my numerology, actually, while we're on that, (laughs) speaking of shiny object syndrome, uh, while we're on numerology, I once did get my numbers done. There's this awesome book by Dan Millman, the guy that wrote – the Way of the Peaceful Warrior. I nearly said The Alchemist. That's so incorrect. I won't say that. That's Paulo Coelho. So The Way of the Peaceful Warrior, beautiful 80s, you know, uh, sort of personal development fables type book, really beautifully written though, and a little bit pop, pulp fiction-y, but really good. So um, Dan Millman also wrote this incredible tome, which is something like the life you were supposed to live or something like that. I'll put it on the bookshelf. So there's a bookshelf on the website now. So go to soulmamahub.com forward slash bookshelf and you'll find all the books I talk about in this podcast or just go to the podcast page and you'll find it. But um, it's a great, it's a cool as book. And um, he, he does this brilliant, brilliant job of outlining numerology and how it applies. It's a really good applicable version of numerology, which doesn't seem as woo-woo as a lot of versions that I've read and sort of abstract. And um, so my number is 22 slash 4, which essentially means master number. That's why I like talking about stuff to people, I suppose. And uh, I like to master things for sure. The master number is 22, but the distilled version of that is number 4. And the thing about 4s is that 
you really both excel at and also struggle with because the same thing that is your superpower is also your greatest challenge. So the thing that I can be amazing at or the thing that I can be really not good at and can be my undoing is methodology and process and step-by-step stability. So if you listen to the last episode, <laughs> you will know that my life has not been very method methodological. It has not been a very stable one. I've had a lot of misadventure. And, and part of that, I think, was working this stuff out. And now I'm training for my black belt. I love the fact that I'm held to a system that makes me go step by step. I mean, you cannot do a jumping, turning, spinning kick if you don't have the basic one. You can't do a jumping, turning, spinning kick if you don't have a basic turning kick. You can't do great punches and kicks at all if you don't have the foundations of really good stances and really good positioning and balance in the body. Same with sparring. Did a great sparring workshop on the weekend with some fantastic teachers. Shout out to you guys, the masters. Amazing lesson. And again, I was learning that without balance and stability, in the body and without actually evenly distributing your weight across your two feet and moving your feet together equidistant and actually making sure that every time you do anything, you're in balance and you're stable. You you don't have any power. You can't be successful. There's no way. And it's a really great reminder. And I love that about the martial arts because here's the thing. I want to go quickly. I want, especially when something's new and exciting and I'm at the beginning of it, I just want to race. I want to get to the next lesson, the next lesson, the next lesson. I mean, like, holler back if you can relate to that. Please come and leave a comment for me to say, you know what I mean, because I tell you what, I'm so, I just, I'm raring to go. When I start, say, a university course, I'll go get all the readings, I'll get all the books, I'll set up all the notebooks, I get really excited, I'll start to race ahead. But that's not very productive, actually. And what happens is I kind of burn that energy, that initial excitement. I sort of burn through it. And then you sort of burn out. You kind of go, oh, I'm past that initial exciting stage and now I've got to do the work. Not only do I have to do the work, I've got to go back over those things that I raced over cursorily, that I that I was the cursory looking at because I was too excited and that I didn't really do the proper setting up and foundations. I didn't really do the proper work at the beginning. So now I've got to go back and do it again. So not only now is it already familiar, but it's also like a bit boring because I've already looked at it. And it doesn't really set you up well, you know. And um, one of my mentors, Tracy Harris, who's amazing. Hola, Tracy Harris, you're amazing. So she also has a podcast, well worth a listen, I must say. I'll put it in the notes as well. So she, you'll hear me talk about her a lot. She's amazing. So she talks a lot about slowing down to speed up. And it sounds a bit weird, but it's exactly what the hare and the tortoise or the turtle and the rabbit. Let's just call it the turtle and the rabbit because that sounds cooler to me. But the, that's exactly what that fable, that story is about, is that it's really the one who slows down and does things properly and actually focuses strategically on each step and really establishing each step or stage of a process. And from that you build and from that you build and from that you build. And then you have, when you build your tower, you have a good foundation. It doesn't fall over. And it's a little bit cliched, I know, but I tell you what, this this stuff, if you can bring that into your daily life, if you can go, okay, if I make a really beautiful pesto on a Sunday, or if I spend five minutes making kombucha, then I have a beautiful, healthy gut drink for the rest of the week. If I make a five times version of coleslaw, then I don't have to make salad every night this week. If I, you know, spend the time to do something properly at the beginning, chocolate's a really good version of this too. Oh God, I make such a good chocolate. There's the yummiest chocolate recipe. Just message me if you want it. And I tell you what, it is so good and you've got to take some time. And in fact, I feel like if I rush it, I ruin it. And chocolate's notorious for responding to you if you're emotionally not present. (laughs) I don't know if you've experienced this, but if you do chocolate the wrong way, it sort of separates and it doesn't work. And it's kind of expensive because the ingredients are quite lush. And it's really annoying when that happens. And the only way that you can make a really good chocolate is if you take your time, make sure the temperatures are right. I make a raw one, so it's 
like coconut oil, raw cacao, that sort of thing. And if you don't do it right, it just is gross and you have to throw it away. And it's really, un- it's really unsettling when you kind of throw away something so delicious and you are looking forward to having a treat, you know. So I think there's a real, there's a lesson in that. And in a lot of the things that we race through in this world that actually, if we can find a way to take something in the time that it's meant to be taken and to learn something slowly and embed it and allow ourselves to go back over things when we need to and go back to something. If we mess up with our kids, go back to them and say, thank you so much for letting me just go over this with you. I need to go over it because I'm not sure I did it the best way the first time. Can we talk about that thing again that was really difficult? Or with our with our kids, if they fight, I know that that's something a lot of us experience, especially maybe if you've got two boys and they're a couple of years apart, this can happen a lot. And look, there's no quick fix, but if you can, over a long period of time, set an intention to help them understand each other and to take some time to let them, in fact, give them time to let them sort things out and help scaffold that for them, that can be incredibly powerful. And I know myself, when I'm having trouble with my kids fighting, I I just want to jump in and fix it. I just want them to stop sometimes. And that's usually more of an expression of my own mental state at that time or my own headspace at that time. Maybe it's the end of a day and I'm tired and I just don't want to hear them yelling or that's when I'm most likely to jump in and just boss them around, tell them what to do. But if you're able to, and I know we're not all the time, you know, go easy, no one's perfect, but if you're able to, Give them a little bit of space, but guide them. So show them the boundaries. Okay, so boys, I know you're having a disagreement right now. I know you don't want to listen to me, but I can't let you hit, kick, spit, whatever they're doing because I'm your mum and it's my job to keep you safe. But what I can do is I can help you guys sort this out. Would you like me to help you sort it up? Now, maybe they're going to say no, mum, and maybe they're going to say that 10 times, but then maybe on the 11th time, they might say yes, because they realise they can't kick, bite, scream, whatever it is that they're doing. And it might might mean that you have to literally give them some really solid boundaries. I know you want to kick each other, but if you do kick each other, there's going to be a consequence. It's going to mean you're not going to get to whatever it is they want to do later. It's going to mean we're not going to be able to do that thing that we're going to do later because I need this to be sorted out in a better way. So just keep at it and persevere. And, you know, you might mess it up a couple of times, 10 times. It doesn't matter. Keep practicing. So here's that thing again, the middle bit, the slow bit in the middle that isn't easy. But if you persevere and if you do the next right thing, take the next right step, whatever that is for whatever it is we're talking about here, things will slowly evolve. And this is why we have to acknowledge our smaller wins, the smaller things that we do, because all of those smaller things are what add up to the big things. And it sounds really obvious, but my gosh, I will forget this, like literally the moment after I finish this podcast, I'll forget it again. And I think we all need reminders, which is why I'm talking about it with you guys, because honestly, it's just the small thing, the small thing, the small thing, the small thing. That's the magic. And like today, for example, I'm looking at a plant, right? And there's this beautiful little plant that I've got growing in a water jug, in a, in a little jar full of water. And it's a gorgeous native orchid. Now, I used to be really bad at looking after plants, but I love plants. I love having plants all over the house. So I've learned slowly over time, making plenty of mistakes, <laughs> how to look after plants. And I noticed that this little plant has been surviving on like one millimeter of itself in the water. I hadn't filled it up very much recently. And I was like, my goodness, I can't believe I haven't even looked like this is in my bedroom and I have been so busy racing ahead on this membership that I'm building because I'm so excited about it that I haven't been noticing really important things like that plant. My One of my favourite plants is about to die in the corner of my own room. That's terrible. <laughs> so those things, like take them as reminders. Go, oof, that was lucky. I'm really glad I remembered to just slow down for a moment. Just take a breath, look around, be a bit mindful. Have a listen to that earlier meditation podcast that I made for you. It's three minutes. Those are the things that will really transform your whole life because it's from our mindset, it's from our approach to things 
then everything else really changes. Now, I'm not saying you get to control the world and create your reality entirely from the way you think. I mean, I do believe it has a huge impact. And we'll talk about this a lot. And I have talked about it already a lot. Obviously, the way we perceive and the way we receive and what we decide to do, the actions we take based on what we're thinking and feeling, have a massive impact. Now, there are things that are out of our control. People can die People can lose a job. You can be the victim of something. I'm not saying those things don't happen. Of course they do. And they're, and they're very, very long and slow processes to recover from. But we do recover. We are incredibly resilient. And if we can remember that we are not our thoughts, that what we think and feel is only one part of us, we're allowed to have feelings. We don't have to be all that feeling. We can have thoughts that are horrible or really not what we desire, but we don't have to identify with those thoughts. We can go, oh, there's that thought. There's that thing. I wonder what that's trying to tell me. We can become curious about what is my body slash mind slash spirit trying to tell me with this thought or this experience or this perception. We can have that part of us and we can practice this like any other neural pathway. We can have that part of us that remains objective in a sort of a Buddhist sense and that allows us to observe and experience things separately to that part of us which thinks or feels. Now, obviously too much detachment and too much of anything is, is out of balance and can be unhealthy. Again, I'm not suggesting that. I'm not a psychologist or psychiatrist. You do your own research here. But what I am suggesting is that there is a way to balance that part of us that is essential, our more soulful self, and the part of us which is a thinking, feeling, doing being. So if we can get that balance and sort that balance a little bit, it's very powerful. And I, I think actually what I'm realizing today is that the thing that I'm doing, this big building of this business thing, and we've all got our bigger projects, our more ambitious projects, and that's probably one of the reasons you're listening to this, because you have ambitions and desires and a deeper purpose, a deeper calling in your life, like many of us do. In order to do that, there's no quick way. It's not like you go, right, snap, I'm going to do that now. That just isn't the thing. It's it's do something and do it a thousand times. It's do something and do it 10,000 times. You know, that's the classic, you're an expert if you've done it 10,000 times. But not just do it like mindlessly. You've got to do it with focus and intention. It's the same when I'm training. It's you go in and you, when you're on the mats training martial arts, you better have your wits about you because you can get knocked out or you could, I mean, it's pretty safe. We look after each other, but there's always that potential that if you're not looking and someone's doing a kick, you can get get hurt, you know, so... It's really good for practicing. Okay, when I'm here, I'm 100% focused. I'm really mindful and aware. I'm exercising all my sen senses, you know, and that's great practice for life. So me, I want to be the turtle. I want to be the tortoise slash turtle, depending where you're listening to this. The turtle for me is the one with the time and space, with the ability to mindfully take each step and each next right action in the knowledge by challenging the hair that it will get there it will get there in the end in the right time so you know your journey is your journey take your time take your time to do things trust the process surrender to the process and oh my goodness so much magic can happen and I love talking about this with you guys because it reminds me to do it myself so anyway, lots and lots of love to you all. Signing out, please do get in touch, share, review. I love hearing from you and bye for now.